what I have brought is just a short presentation on foam rolling. Um, let me just share my screen, which you should now be able to see. So uh, we chose the title Foam Rolling Relevance in Sports and how it can be used to modify force transmission. And um, yeah, I, I, I just to, to describe a little bit my background, um, besides being an academic researcher doing, doing uh, yeah, lots of stuff on, on the relevance of fascia from a mechanical point of view, um, I'm also working as a conditioning coach and as a consultant in the sports and fitness area. So that's my relation to the, to the sports and exercise sector. So um, in, in, in football, in, in skiing, I have been consulting teams and associations um, on how to design exercise programs and how to involve fascia in their exercise programs. And um, I've also been working with elite athletes in, in football, for example, um, in, in a German elite football club. And uh, I've been a conditioning coach, strength and conditioning coach of Angelique Kerber. Um, he, he, he was a former Wimbledon champion. So that's, that's just my background. And I want to directly start with my presentation. So the first question is what actually is foam rolling? I, also, I, I will always abbreviate the term with FR for foam rolling. Um, and if you had just have a look into the media or watch your favorite sport, you can see that there are many people using these foam rolls. Um, and, and, and that's what foam rolling is about. So just take a roll, um, jump on it and, and roll over the muscles and over, over all the soft tissue. And this kind of self massage is what is called um, foam rolling or also self myofascial release. And um, there, there's a lot, a lot of stories out there and a lot of things people think foam rolling could do. So this is just a short list. So it can correct muscle imbalance. It can relax your muscles, improve joint range of motion. Um, I don't want to go to, through all of this, but you can already see that there is lots of things um, people think foam rolling can do. And if you read all this, uh, it's a little bit about like, like the holy grail because um, if you read this, you think foam rolling can do anything. It can help you to be a better person even because um, it, it can kind of fix anything what's going wrong in your body. So that's, that's what I found on the internet. So it's, it's not a scientific description. It's just a, an overview, which I found in the internet, what a person was saying, look, that's what foam rolling can do. And um, what I want to show you actually is a more evidence-based presentation about what can foam rolling do and what, um, um, yeah, is not possible. So, so what and how can you apply foam rolling in the sports and fitness sector with athletes? So just some general remarks. So if you do foam rolling, remember always that pressure is force per area. So um, if you have, if you see this, this will be painful because it's only one needle, yeah, which goes into a very, very a uh, small area and here you have lots of needles or uh, nails even um, which are finely distributed through the whole body so the force is distributed so if you're using foam rolling and it's too painful for example if you're using a golf ball or a tennis ball or something very very small and you have too much pain just use a second roller or use something else where you can distribute your forces and you will have less pain so um, sometimes people say, I cannot apply foam rolling here or there because it's too painful, but that's not true. You just need to modify the conditions, just use more rollers um, and distribute the forces so it will not be that painful. So you can use foam rolling in any region of the body, almost in any region. Then we have to look into how foam rolling may affect our tissues. So basically, from a mechanical point of view, we have two types of tissue deformation. The first is just a normal compression on the left side. You can see there is compression. The force is going um, up to down. So it's a downward force which compresses the tissue and moves it downwards. On the right side, you can see a different force application, which is shear strain. So you can see that the upper part of the tissue here is going into the direction where the hand is pushing. And you can see that the tissue um, down here um, where shear, shear stress stands 
um, there the tissue stays more or less the same. So there is a shearing motion between the upper and the lower layers.